Thank you, Fred, and welcome uh, all of you back, I think, after a little uh, summer vacation. Um, I'm going to talk about and just tee up the revenue conversation. Um, and uh, we've been, as Fred said, uh, talking quite a bit about things that will cost a lot of money. So now it's time to start talking about where we find that money. And I'll, I'll start maybe with uh, the fact that Mike and I went in to brief uh, Mayor Breed about Casa a couple days ago. She accused us of being Trinitarians um, because we kept referring to the three Ps. Um, and I don't know about Mike, but I'll plead guilty to uh, Trinitarianism because I like to group things into three. And I've got three of them for you to kick this conversation off. Uh, the first is uh, your three Ps are very expensive. Um, and uh, we've, we've done a scan. Uh, and you'll get some detail on it in a second, uh, that suggests it's at least one and a half billion dollars per year is our bogey. Um, and that's a lot of money to raise anywhere, anytime. Um, but it does give us a target. Uh, I doubt we're going to get all there in one legislative session or in one election. Uh, but the hope is that we could fashion a consensus that is enduring. Uh, and that will see us through a couple of sessions and a couple of elections uh, where we ought to be able to do some serious damage uh, to that number. The second is you will note that we have organized these revenue ideas uh, when Vikrant presents them sort of according to communities of interest. So we could raise money from property owners, from developers, from employers, from local government, from taxpayers, from philanthropy, and you know, one approach might be let's figure out who we could gang up on, who's the least popular, uh, and try to jam it down their throat. Um, and I probably wouldn't recommend that strategy. Uh, I, I think what might make more sense, and we're very much looking forward to your reaction on this point after you've seen the information, is a share the pain strategy. Um, and given how deep and broad the financial challenge is, I think sharing the pain not only makes some political sense, but it probably is going to make some financial sense too, because there is just not enough money in anybody, any single pocket, uh, to make this thing work. The third is just to maybe leave you with a story, uh, and the story I hope suggests to you that, that we ought to keep hope alive. Um, and the story goes back to the early 80s when the transportation community was despairing of ever raising money in the gas tax in either Sacramento or Washington and decided uh, to take a flyer on a new approach which was to raise money at the local level. Um, and in 1984, Santa Clara County, in fact, became the first county in the state of California to raise its own money for transportation improvements. Uh, and they have been followed by most of the counties where most of the population of the state lives. And as of this year, 35 years later, uh, we've raised $70 billion for transportation improvements statewide, a lot of that by two-thirds voting margins. Um, so to me, that suggests there is hope. I, I know transportation and housing are not identical subjects, nor do they resonate with the public in an identical way. Uh, but the fact that we have been that successful uh, suggests to me that we've got the chance of trying to replicate that success in the housing arena. Um, and uh, if you're keeping score, you know, $70 billion over 35 years is about $2 billion a year on average. So uh, the $1.5 billion maybe doesn't sound so far away. So, Ken, I'll turn it over to you, uh, and uh, we look forward to your reaction to what you're about to see. <laughs> 